Hello everyone and welcome back to our next lecture. Um, I hope you've done enough practice for dictionaries in order to prepare you for this next Python concept. In my opinion, I'd say it's maybe one of the most important concepts in Python. And tr trust me, it's going to be easy, don't worry. It's going to be about if, elf, else. So if I ask you this question, what is if, like what does if mean? So basically, if is a condition. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say your parents tell you, if you get good grades, then I'm going to reward you. It's basically a condition that needs to be fulfilled in order for that result to happen. Um, that's exactly how Python works with if statements. So this is an example of an if code. So if I check for the type of hello, and then I see if it's e if it is a string, this equal equal sign here means that two values are the same. But if I use the word is instead of these equal equal signs, that is checking if their memory addresses are the same, which is obviously false. Um, and I, I bet some of you are asking, asking right now, um, why can we use just one equal sign? Well, one equal sign is only for assigning values. It is not used to check whether two things are the same. And an if condition, you can say, executes to a type we haven't discussed earlier because I wanted to save it for this lecture, a Boolean type. Now, a Boolean type can be either true or false. And if it's true, that means the if condition executes. If it's false, that means it's not going to execute. So if our type of hello here was a string, then it would return thank you. But if our type wasn't a string, that means this whole thing is false and your thank you will not be returned. We have an elif statement. Elif follows an if statement. So let me just show something to you on Python. If elif else. Elif can follow an if. And elif is always dependent on the if statement because if the if statement is false, that means it is automatically going to go to elif. But if maybe some of you are wondering, why can't we just keep it if and if? Well, you can do that as well, but it's just they wouldn't be related to each other because this if is independent of the other if. Let's say if this was false, then this if is basically checking for another condition. So elif is always related to and dependent to the first if. And then if you have two ifs, that means you want them to um, check separate situations, for example. Um, going back, let's talk a little more about elif. Now, elf is a shorter version of else if. That means if your first if statement is false, it's saying that, oh, maybe something else might be true. So it goes into elif. And you can have multiple elif statements. It's not only limited to one. Um, here's an example. If type of one is a string, it means the value of this function here is a string, return true. But we know that one is an integer, so this would be automatically false. Then it goes into the elif statement because this was false. So elif type of one was an int. We know this is true, so you have to return true because the elif statement was dependent on if. If was false, goes into elif. If elif is true, so you return true. And remember, when you are coding if and elf statements, your condition should always be, should always have a colon on the end. That means you are starting a new block of code. All right. Now, finally, we will talk about else. Else doesn't have a conditional statement. It is basically like you can say distinct from if and elf, but it's also dependent on the previous statements. Because it's saying, for example, your if has a condition, your elf has a condition. If all these conditions are not met, that means you have no option but to go to else, and else will execute no matter what exactly. So else will not execute if either 
of your elif conditions or your if conditions execute to true. Else will only execute if none of your conditions are met. Let me repeat that, probably you might be confused. Else always executes if none of your previous conditions execute to true. So let me um, show you an example here. You have two variables, which are top and top two. So top is one, two, three, top two is one, two, three, they're both the same. Now, if top is top two, that means if they both have the same memory addresses, we talked about this, this is going to be false. So it's not going to return true. Elif top equals equals to top two, then it returns true. The elif statement will execute to true because they both have the same values. But imagine if your top two is going to be one, two, and four. Your elif will execute to false as well. So that's where the else statement comes in. It will return false no matter what because your previous conditions have been executed to false. So let me um, do an example. And this time we are going to use um, new statements. So let me put in two variables, which is here equals to 932, and then L equals to um, 25, 25, 4, and 6. Okay. So my first if statement will check if the length of deer is equal to the length of L and oh this is something new we haven't talked about well I'm going to explain it in a bit and length of deer does not equal to zero when you have an exclamation point and you have an equal sign that's basically saying not so it's the opposite of it's the opposite of checking if they're equal. So it's saying not. Here's our keyword and. And is basically a, you can say, Boolean expression. So and executes to true if two conditions are true. If one of them is false, that means your and condition is automatically going to be false. If both were false, it's going to be false. If both were true, that is the only time where and will be true which is different from OR, because OR in Python checks if either one is true. If both are false, that's the only time where you have it as false. If one was true and the other was false, it's still going to be true. So remember, this is Boolean logic, which is very important in computer science, especially in circuit designs, which um, probably you might touch on later in other courses. So let's check AND. get this out of the way. So you print hi elif length of L was two you print hi there. Else you print wrong can this is basically, this is random by the way. Um, sorry, I'm just going to change these values. So let's start here. Hi there was printed. Why? Because our first if condition executed to false because their lengths are different. So the length of L was 2, so you print hi there. Let's change that to 6 now. It prints high because your first if condition executed to true because both have length 3 and deer, deer's length is not equal to 0. But let's change this a bit. Let me put this equal to 25 and let's see what's going to be printed. Wrong condition. Why? Well, because the lengths are different. Um, Al's length is not equal to 2, so all of the conditions 
before the else statement have been executed to false, so you have no other option except printing wrong condition. That's how, that's maybe a general format of how if else else works. In our next lecture, we will be touching on for loops, so stay tuned. Thank you.